Hi guys, welcome back. We're just looking uh, at all the anti -surface, the surface texture that's been applied to the model. Just going to show you a brief view of that. Just prior to this video, it's just going to be all about the painting weathering effects that we're going to apply in this Merc of a hybrid tank. Just uh, showing you the instructions here. It shows you which schemes are applied. They're basically the same colors. Going to be using the Megamo One Shot Primer. And this is a special edition set from Ammo of Meg, which is a set of six colors that are specially designed for the IDF armor. And that's the selection they have inside the box. Let's go straight in the primer stage. One shot primer poured directly into the airbrush cup, no need for dilution. And as usual, starting off with a light misty coat all over the surface. Point to note, of course, this uh, black shade, again, will uh, totally enhance all the shadow areas of the model as we go in, into the painting. So uh, two jobs in one, obviously a primer coat, a very durable primer coat, and also the, the shadows and deep shadow areas, uh, obviously eliminating any areas of bare plastic. Just making sure there that you hit everywhere. I hit the underneath of the tank uh, as well, all areas to make sure that they're totally covered. Just sort of finishing off now, you can see that it's, the uh, primer's been built up over a few layers, and as a result. And the base coat. Same thing again, nice misty coats. You can see straight away as this goes on, you're going to see the differential there between the anti-slip areas and very deliberate areas of um, areas of the tank that I wanted to show that would break up the panels. Now the advantage of course of these acrylic colours is that they are highly opaque so you get very quick coverage. Even obviously on this uh, black primer you, you're getting quite immediate coverage. I use quite a high pressure, I think about 30 psi when I was applying this and it goes very quickly obviously, nothing complex here, one single colour. Now point to note, this colour that I've applied here is not the correct colour, I use the instructions that indicated to use this shade. It's more of a sandy brown, we don't want that, we wanted a grey green colour. So this actually, this coat here was more a, a base coat. And when I brought it back to the desk, I could see that it was actually the wrong shade. I consulted some friends, colleagues. And there we actually use the paint sample, we use the Sinai Grey, the middle one, there's two shades of Sinai Grey, use the middle one, reapplied it, didn't show you that. Also use the Titan Tracks uh, set to colour the paint, but I didn't show you the airbrushing of that. I'm going on a detail painting, which is using uh, brushes. Now I'm using two paints here, one of them is a worn rubber colour, which is a grey. And I mixed in a bit of satin black to sort of take away the harshness of that, uh, of that uh, worn grey. And of course we're coating all the, the rubber part of the road wheels. Thank you. 
secret to painting here is uh, very light coats. What I mean is that the paint's quite thin. And by doing so, the capillary action will actually allow that paint to flow in against the details. And if you're careful, you take your time, just build up the layers. You can actually see how the, the paint's sort of transparent because it's quite thin. So that process is repeated a few times until you build up the paint layers. There you can see it going on in very high detail there. Now we're going to apply some paints to the track areas. Now these were airbrushed in, in light brown. I'm going to accentuate that using a wash. This is uh, Ammo of MIG track wash. You can see it's quite a, a dark brown shade. And this is just applied as a wash onto the track area. It's going to give more depth to those tracks, make them look uh, more realistic, more worn, really, which is the effect that we're going for on this on this model. And I think I'm using the satin black here. Yeah, just to paint the. Um, the turret mounted machine guns for the commander and the and it's a bit more detail painting using a brown shade to paint out the spare track links. And also the recovery cable, which was the detailed part that we uh, formed using brass wire. A secret, of course, to just take your time when you're doing this. And there's a few details, there's some details in red. I believe this is might be an emergency fire handle, but I'm not too sure on the Mercury. And the fire extinguishers were painted with this uh, IDF green shade and now we're just doing a bit of touch up where some of the paint obviously like that where the shovels retained I've over painted that so we're just doing some corrections and it's applied near like a filter I wanted the mantlet cover to be a different shade to the rest of the vehicle And now because we have got a satin base coat, uh, there was no need to apply gloss, went straight into decals on top of the ammo of MIG paint. Very simple procedure, of course. Put the um, water slide transfers into the water to um, ease them from the backing paper, dampen the surface, apply the decal, bed it down. And the final part is uh, using a, it's a Mr. Hobby product, um, Mr. Mark Setter. And this really sort of flattens and smooths the decal uh, against the surface to give it that painted on look.
Now we're using satin lucky varnish on top of the decals, on top of the coat. This is a procedure I use prior to weathering. This goes straight into the airbrush, no need for dilution. And you can see that actually it comes out, uh, it's very um, uh, thin mixture, coats very easily. This varnish, of course, is gonna protect the paint layer, but it's also quite important to the weathering procedure that we're coming on to, and I'll explain why in a minute. There you can see, now you can see the extenuation of the two different shades there with the, 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 the satin has actually brought that out, and now we've got this um, shiny surface, and we wanna add, first of all, filter. This is the Ammo of MIG um, sand for gray vehicles filter. Use a broad brush and you actually remove most of the, uh, the liquid from the brush. And the trick here is not to apply it as paint uh, as such, but it's just to make the surface basically damp with the filter and to blend it in. It's sort of the first stage in weathering and it's going to um, Combine those two shades of paint with a filter on top. Now we're going to the fading with the oils technique. This is the technique I use for, for weathering. Just going to show you what I'm going to use. Um, satin brushes, broad brush, pipette for the thinner. And oil brushes. We're using oil brushes for the first time. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to start off with the lighter shades. And we need a mixture of the thinner. And first of all, we moisten the surface of an area of the model that we're gonna work on. Only work in a small area at a time. Now these oil brushes are self-contained oil. The oil's quite thin, so it is quite a liquid mixture. And the beauty of this system is that they have their own application brush. So you can go straight from the oil brushes straight onto the model. And I'm applying very small dots of oil Going through a few stages, I'm using ochre now. You can see a bit closer there, we're gonna get different shades on there. And this is either a boff or a dust color. Just light shades, obviously, that, um, that we're applying first of all. Now this is a nylon brush, and you can see it's quite worn. You do really want a nylon brush for this because this is a harsh treatment. And we're actually gonna start blending these oils using a stippling technique, which is dotting the oils, basically moving them and merging them into one another. So it's a blending technique. You notice that I'm not brushing down or drawing down with that paintbrush. I'm merely pushing the oils around. And this is the technique that um, a lot of models use, and I certainly have been using for many years to blend the oils quite effectively. And then we just go on to a different area it is best to work on a small area at a time so that you can control the paint and, and the oil blending. And as I was saying before, the satin surface actually assists with this technique. It allows those oils to blend more. They have a surface that they uh, won't adhere and actually melt into as into a, a matte surface so you, you're, you're blending on top and you'll see later on that this technique this fading technique will actually remove the matte from the paint there is uh, uh, no need for, for a matte coat if, if you uh, if you apply this procedure now you can see the ochre I, I, I tended to apply that along the lines where I wanted to break up some of the shapes and panels of, of this model, of this tank. It's quite a quick technique and quite easy once you've tried it a few times. I suppose the things to look out for are using the, the right amount of oils and taking your time to blend carefully. Just removing a few of the masks. I didn't really mention that earlier, but all the optics were masked prior to painting and now they're being removed.
Now I'll just show you a variation that we're using on the vertical surfaces. We're still using oil dot fading technique, but there is a variation as we got the, the vertical surfaces. On top we were stippling, there was no drawing down the brush, you're just gonna see a difference in a minute. Same technique again with the light oils being applied in small dots in a more or less random manner on a section of the model that you're working on. And then again, I've used the ochre to emphasize some detail areas. Now we start by using that same stippling technique so that's blending those and now we use the fan brush to draw down vertically so we're creating the first streaking weathering type effects traditional weathering effects that most of you guys will be familiar with and on this one we're drawing down a little bit on those surfaces as well there's a slight slope of course uh, on that Merkava on that engine deck a little bit close again you can see the blending going on You see it's quite a quick technique really and uh, I'm working the oils very quickly and then just drawing down on them. And maybe after you leave the oils to, to settle, maybe 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, come back, tidy up. Look at areas where we want to add more streaking, more enhancements. Other technique is the pin wash with oils. This is, again, really one of my favorite techniques. And now we're going to the dark oils. We're using, we're going to be using a mixture of, of oil brushes, using different brushes, finer brushes. I think we're starting off with a Starship um, a sludge color. And we used a dark brown and some grays to create our own mixture, a custom mixture. That's again the beauty of these oils. Now we're using the brush here to dispense the oils into a little mixing cup that, um, that is gonna allow us to apply this technique. And we're applying thinner, the enamel thinners, on top of the oils and mixing them together. And we're creating now our custom wash. This is our pin wash. using the small brush now fine brush very delicate technique we are going to hit all the detail areas so these are the recess type panel lines edges um, you can paint on the areas that you want to accentuate accentuate and draw out using this technique Now, one thing, of course, with this uh, anti-slip texture is that the wash will, it's going to have difficulty following the, detail, the details, the extreme details. So I had to vary my technique a little bit and sort of dot on the oils where I wanted to break up and show areas where I wanted that darker wash to draw out the panels. some areas actually that washes applied onto the metallic type areas the metallic worn areas so I'm talking about the, the track links that uh, recovery cable and in certain areas we want to tidy up as well that's what we're using that other brush for there and that and this is quite uh, you can see the contrast here now we're moving a smooth area of plastic uh, you know without that anti-slip and you can see how the wash just flows into the detail points and it's two things that you're really uh, trying to indicate here you're indicating of course the detail you're drawing out you're creating an artificial shadow and areas where dirt and grime would naturally accumulate on these vehicles work towards the hull here again I'm dotting on the oils to break up the shapes of these panels that I deliberately left with areas that were free of the anti-slip texture. Now 
I certainly wanted to add some emphasis now to these grill areas. And there we're blending, we're just using a, a feathered um, uh, brush, um, drawing out the oils, bringing them back out away from the area of concentration. So that, that blending uh, allows for a more subtle variation between these, the dark, the, the, uh, the dark pin wash and what was previously applied, which was the lighter colors that sort of formulate around the, the middle of the panels. And you can see how the, the actual vehicle now, it's taking on a much more varied and interesting appearance. And really that's, that's what we're sort of aiming for in our weathering. We want to create areas of interest that draw our, you know, our own eyes and the observer's eyes to areas of detail on our models. And a bit of blending again. Good idea, just take your time with this technique. Always looking, moving in, uh, looking back on, on your previous work and blending with areas that you uh, feel need corrections. It's a pretty good example here where you can see the capillary action of the wash. That's why we remove the uh, oils from the actual, the oil brushes from inside the containers. It, it's too thick a liquid to naturally be drawn, it's too concentrated. So we use that thinner to create that wash. And when it's in that liquid form, you can see it just zip down the lines naturally. Like in that example there, we can see the detail being fully drawn out to your eyes. a couple of bolts as well get high, highlighted drawn out again in a more or less random fashion as well maybe try and break up that appearance and a bit of blending there we're creating some streaks blending in naturally with the previous effects with that fading technique Okay, Windsor & Newton, Series 7, my favorite paintbrush. We're gonna go into the chipping and painting effects. We're using, again, our Mauve Meg. Chipping as the color, so we're looking for a, a dark color, so a dark brown. And I used a, a mixture as well to create a, a, a darker effect. Uh, used, of course, some diluted, some water, some deionized water, and that's mixed in a ratio of about two to one, two water to one paint to create a, um, uh, a paint that will work well with the chipping. Now the secret of this technique really is time, patience and experience. That's uh, really what it comes down to. Now we aren't creating crude big chips. We are trying to create the chips as small as we possibly can to realistically recreate the uh, effects of paint wearing. These IDF vehicles are very well maintained by the um, Israeli crews and there isn't really much evidence of, of paint wear and chipping. So we're adding very subtle effects. We aren't creating a, uh, you know, like a rusty scrap heap type vehicle by any means. We're just, again, sort of drawing out the detail on the edges, showing areas that would, are more prone to worn that wear and tear than the others. So that's the sort of protrusion type areas, areas where the crew are around and you can just see more or less sort of like stippling that paint on to the sort of details. And see this close up here, I'm accentuating the, the edge of that hatch there, just tapping on the paint really. Now, as you can gather this effect, it's nearly microscopic, but that's really the way I want it to appear. I don't want the crude big chips uh, especially on this vehicle, we want it to appear as realistic as we want in, in line with the subject. Um, of course, in other situations, you are going to go for, for bigger chips, but 
and this one nice sort of in scale and realistic of course it takes a long time to do this it is a few scratches being added on just drawing that paintbrush down and very finely and randomly adding areas of, of wear and tear where perhaps the turrets turned against an item and corroded the paint possibly but again keeping it subtle of course with this chipping technique of course there's absolutely going to be none of it on the anti-slip areas the anti-slip is, is a very um, coarse aggregate material so you're not going to see any bare metal through that whatsoever or worn paint But areas such as these um, hatch clips and again uh, again we're accentuating those areas where the anti-slip is not applied which breaks up those panels the um, headlight guards got a bit more chipping it's again to create an area of visual interest to the viewer now we can use sponge technique variation you see how I'm folding that sponge into a ball? I'm forming a tight ball with it, not a ragged end like you'll see other guys do that. That's applied into the mixture. And you're really gonna get a lot of that paint off. You are gonna be basically left with nothing on that. The very finest amount. You do not wanna be dabbing paint on. If you wanna create these very, very small, very subtle chips, this is the way to do it and it's going to be microscopic you, you, you're going to have to really look hard but you'll see that the the effect is built up very slowly it's only been applied to the areas and it's very subtle area of course to accentuate we want to break up some of these panels a little bit of the armor plating add a bit of wear in there that sort of complements you can just see how that sponge technique has just basically created some wear and interest there and now a more or less random area of the side is being enhanced again Okay, now we've got the dust effects, really one of the sort of final areas that we're going to. We're using uh, Ammo Make Rain Marks effects. I want to use the lightest colour I could find for this dust, and I'm just highlighting the area we're going to apply to, which is going to be the lower part of the hull. We're starting off with uh, Ammo of Make uh, Heavy Scratches effect, which is like, this is the hairspray technique, but using out of the bottle product. That's gone straight, that was diluted with water on the airbrush and now it's being applied to the lower area of the hull only. The dust effects aren't going to be going everywhere. We're going to try and imagine your own vehicle, the way that dust would accumulate just towards the bottom half. That is very much the way that tanks and other vehicles accumulate dust. So this is really the only area that we want to have the, the heavy effects. And we chose that light, light dust. Um, to have a contrast. If you want to speed this up, by all means, use a hairdryer. Uh, low settings, of course, and uh, you can speed up the, the drying of the, the hairspray or the, the scratches product. Now we pour the rain marks effect into the airbrush. And you can just see, we're just going for that lower half. We are dusting all the wheels and all the tracks at this point as well. So we're nailing two areas here. We're gonna, we've laid down the, the base dust effects on that skirt. And also we've basically done all the dusting of the, um, of the tracks and the road wheels. Just did a very light overspray over both the turret and the hull. Very light, I mean like one pass. Two brushes, feather and brush and an edge brush. Now you can just see that some larger areas and that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be Applying some water. This is um, deionized water. And first of all, moisture in the surface. And this is going to activate the chipping product. 
which is caught beneath the layer of the, the dust effects or the rain marks effects. Now we're drawing down with that feathered brush and it's going to take away quite a lot of that, um, that product as it activates the hairbrush, it dissolves and takes away the layer on top of it. And you can see that the, uh, the effect creates this effect more as if the dust was on the vehicle possibly and it's been more or less brushed away maybe by um, the vehicle's movements or by rain or moisture. But again, of course, we're drawing downwards vertically. You can sometimes add some chips into it as if it's been brushed off using toothpick as well. And of course, the lower the lower hull area as well gets the same uh, same treatment. Now you can see how the dust is now really on the lower edge of that of that skirt now. Nowhere else really. Um, there is that fine mist that we applied on top, but um, dust effects can really overpower your model. So using this, it's kind of subtle. There's more than one way to do this, believe me, but this is just one technique that you can, you can get an attractive, visually attractive appearance. Now we need to tidy up a bit. We're using the um, enamel thinner here, and we just had areas where the, uh, the rain marks effect, that, that enamel filter, it came out in a few larger blobs. Now we want to blend them in. So this is just corrections. But it's important because we don't want those overscale um, big drops of paint or else it just does look like big drops of paint on your model. You want everything small, minimalist and as realistic as possible really. Just drawn down a few areas there. You can see there's one of those larger paints and it's drawn out, sort of erased and faded downwards. Some metallic effects now. Just using a graphite pencil for this, nothing more. Can't get much simpler than this effect and it's one of my favourites. Don't need to coat the entire track, we're just looking for the areas that uh, obviously are going to be visible to the viewer. And a little bit of polishing with your fingers. Perhaps a little bit of touch on those um, turret mounted MGs. I've got the pigments. Using an of MIG, uh, North Africa dust. Trying to choose the lightest pigment I could find. Now we're applying this pigment only in very selective areas. We're looking at the areas where the crew would basically bring the dust, etc., with their boots up to the entrance point, so that's the hatches. And using a little micro brush there to apply it. And then uh, we're using a, a, a nylon brush to blend that dust. Because we've got that anti-slip texture, the, the, we don't need to apply any fixer. That, that pigment will just hold naturally. Into, um, into into the texture. Another few like random areas, perhaps where the uh, the driver has climbed up on the vehicle. You can see that it's, it's a subtle effect again, but it's created uh, another shade and a more variety in the appearance. Now I went for a bit more of a concentrated application towards. This is where a fuel filler point is on the vehicle. And then we used the wash this time, US Modern uh, Vehicles Wash. And we applied drops of this wash, quite thick concentration, to sort of create an area where dust and um, grime is sort of built up and being lubricated. Now we're just doing a few splash effects. Uh, remember with Merkava, the engine deck is actually at the front of the vehicle, so I'm adding sort of like oil, dusty, greasy type effects on top by splattering that oil. Uh, you can use, um, I use this micro brush and sort of flick it with my finger as you can see. Uh, try and get the, you want those drops as small as possible. Again. And now again we're using a brush with some enamel thinner. And where those drops were too big, too harsh, 
we want to blend them back again into the frame into the uh, overall effect so we don't want it overpowering you but we want it to look perhaps a bit aged aged oil spills to uh, create a more realistic appearance once again I use the same wash here again just to just add a few more random streaks onto the uh, the, the arm and side skirts of the Merkava. We just draw down, just create that streaking. Again, very subtle. You can see how, you, you can't see how subtle it is. That is how, uh, how we can approach weathering so it's not overpowering. You see the blending's quite nice. And let's just have a look at the finished model. I hope you enjoy. Leave some comments, ask me any questions. And we'll try and get the video up a bit sooner next time. Thanks again.